All right, for lecture number six here, we're going to talk more about phagocytes. Those are cells that can do phagocytosis and those processes. Okay, your phagocyte, cells that can do phagocytosis, um, your chief ones include your neutrophils um, and your macrophages. Those are, these are your main phagocytic cells. There are some others that can do it as well, but those are your, your top two. Okay, and then your macrophages, so we learned earlier when we studied the blood that in your blood you have monocytes. Those are pretty big white blood cells. They're kind of oval in shape, and they have a nucleus that's shaped like a horseshoe. And when those leave the blood and get into your interstitial fluids, they become wandering macrophages, or some people call them free macrophages. So they ooze around, you know, kind of like amoebas, moves around, uh, moves, <laughs> ooze around if you've ever seen amoebas. Um, like in a video or you looked at them under a microscope in a sample of pond water. So they wander around and they look for things that are foreign to the body that they need to ingest. Um, and then there are alveolar macrophages, uh, for example, would be macrophages that are stationed in the alveoli in the lungs. Those are the little tiny air spaces where gas exchange happens with the pulmonary capillaries. Then you have some macrophages that are called fixed macrophages because they're just stationed in place and stay there all the time. Um, and those include uh, Kupfer cells that you have in the liver. You always have macrophages stationed in your liver to intercept things that are not supposed to be there. And the liver also helps the spleen get rid of old worn out blood cells. Microglia in the brain, if you guys remember those from when you studied the nervous system. You have um, other cells besides neurons in your brain and one type that you learned about were the microglia. They are very small cells and um, they function like macrophages in the brain and uh, help clear out things that are foreign to the brain that are not supposed to be in there. And it's good that you permanently have macrophages stationed in your brain because the brain is sort of a sensitive organ so when bacteria and viruses get in there if unfortunately they do. Unfortunately they do that at times. You want to be able to clear those out as soon as possible. Alright, then you have your neutrophils. Neutrophils, I put PMNs here just to remind you that uh, there are people who call neutrophils PMN, so just be aware that stands for polymorphonuclear cell if you remember that from chapter 17 because they have that weird shaped nucleus that almost looks like a string of uh, balloons or sausages and so your neutrophils are the most abundant leukocytes in your bloodstream so when you have an infection occurring um, you know there are signals that are sent to stimulate inflammation in that tissue and the blood vessels that supply uh, those tissues become leakier blood flow increases those blood vessels dilate and out come the white blood cells, the neutrophils are the most abundant, as you guys may remember from chapter 17. So they're your first responders, and they're especially good at phagocytosing bacteria. So, And they're not looking for any spe a specific type of bacteria. There are things on the surfaces of bacteria that are common to a lot of different types of bacteria, and that's what your neutrophils recognize, and, and that allows them to attached to them and gobble them up. Phagocytosis can be uh, pretty dramatic. So this is an image that was generated with an electron microscope. This has been uh, magnified 1,750 times. That's much more powerful than what we can do with a typical light microscope like you would find in a college laboratory. And uh, then these images get colorized. Whenever you see these really cool, highly magnified images, they're almost always made with a type of an electron microscope called a scanning electron microscope. So this purple cell that you see here is a macrophage and it has attached to bacteria that are round or spherical in shape and green and um, it's in the process it's going to engulf those take them inside and break them up with a bunch of toxic chemicals and digestive enzymes. And that process is called phagocytosis and um, the major steps of phagocytosis are shown to you over here on the right hand side. Your phagocytic cell, macrophage or neutrophil usually, uh, attaches to the surface 
of a pathogen or it could be an old worn out red blood cell or it could be debris like from damaged or burned tissues attaches to those things uh, uses the endocytosis process to ingest them wraps them around a little a little portion of the cytoplasmic membrane the cell membrane up here pinches off and so our bacteria in this case come inside in a little membrane covered compartment and then you have, uh, you may remember from Biology 201, there are membrane covered compartments or organelles inside our cells called lysosomes. And those lysosomes are sometimes referred to as the stomachs of our cells because they contain lots of digestive enzymes, things that break up proteins and carbohydrates and lipids and DNA and RNA. And um, there also are toxic chemicals in here as well. That, uh, that kill ingested microorganisms. So the li a lysosome fuses with this compartment. This compartment is called a phagosome or a phagocytic vesicle that has the, the bacteria or foreign substances or red blood cells, whatever they are inside it. Those two get together. So all these enzymes get dumped onto the foreign substances and they get chopped up. So that's what they're referring to, these acid hydrolase enzyme. Hydrolases use water molecules to break bonds. If you guys remember hydrolysis reactions, maybe somewhere deep in the recesses of your mind from when you first took Biology 201, those are uh, um, hydrolysis reactions are used to chop up things like proteins into amino acids and carbohydrates into monosaccharides. So that's what's going on here. That's what those enzymes are doing. Remember, enzymes perform chemical reactions. Finally, you have your digested microbe or you know, worn out tissue parts, whatever it may be, worn out or damaged tissue parts, red blood cells, etc. And then that uh, compartment, this membrane covered vesicle, travels to the surface and the membrane of our our uh, compartment here, our vesicle, merges with the cell membrane. They melt together and all the debris is dumped out to the outside. That process is called exocytosis. And this is really the goal of your immune system almost all the time. This is the main way your immune system kills microorganisms that have invaded the body. And so most, uh, most of the other weapons of your immune system are concerned with helping this happen more efficiently and you'll learn a lot more about that when you take microbiology. Alright, the next lecture we're going to talk more about inflammation and fever. Inflammation is one of the key processes of your innate immune system and uh, we're going to talk about some of the highlights um, and some of that's going to be a review from Biology 201 when you studied the skin and tissues but we're going to go back over it again here as part of our study of innate immunity.